guys and welcome back to the channel. In our last video, we set ourselves a challenge to get the Mark IV track ready in 14 days. Now, that is a serious challenge for us. We've still got a cage to paint, doors to fit, all sorts. We've still got to get the wiring in and make sure it runs before we can do anything. So, let's go and have a look at how we've been getting on. First things first, we had to mask up everywhere we didn't want the paint to go. Thankfully for me, my dad had plenty of experience doing this being a professional car body repairer and spray painter. And once that was done, it was then to apply some primer and the paint. At this point, we now have it all painted and the next challenge is to get the dash in and get the wiring all laid out. This proved challenging because of the roll cage, the dash had to be cut in multiple places and the wiring had to be routed round about it. However, not everything went smoothly. We came up against our first challenge. We had no power in the car and couldn't get the ignition on. So we had to investigate why. We knew that we'd left off a couple of earth straps from underneath the original seats. However, we didn't think that this would stop the car from switching on, but it is amazing what stops a modern car from switching on these days. So now we've got lights. lights. Moment of truth. Alan, yeah. hit the button. Hey! <laughs> Running. She runs. It's yeah. amazing. That's what we're putting this on. That's not too bad. It's just the cat. Well, it's set off the cat. Well, it's got a cat on it. It's got a cat on it. But um, uh, that's not bad. So all that was missing was just the yeah. yeah. earths. Well, well, we get it started. Well, we get it started. Having the car running was a major step forward. Now it was time to start bolting on the doors and the tailgate. So everything was really going to plan. We just started trimming down the bars. Now it was time to get the doors on. But that was easier said than done. We're, we're proud here, so we need to just lift that top one and get that out. And then we'll work the bottom one. We'll work our way back. Just like golf. Probably is off at golf. <clears throat> Probably, aye. <laughs> Colour. So all we need to do is kick this out a wee bit to bring it into line, but other than that, everything else is pretty much straight up. So the gap up here is still a little bit too far in on the door, but it's a little bit far out here, so we just need to try and get it all shifted so it lines up. The only problem we've got is this wing is repaired. So it's whether the wing is perfect shape or not, the bottom of it was twisted. So we'll see if we can get it lined up. So you might be wondering, it's a race car, why be so pernickety about the door gaps? Well, I'll let the expert explain this one. Okay, so what we've tried to do here is work off this line. If we get this line correct, the door, with the door and the wing, then we can work our way back. That means we should be correct at the back. If you don't spend all the time getting this bit correct, then you'll have a knock-on effect when you're back here and you end up chasing a gap or, or, or a wheel wind up with too tight. So you want to get this bit right and work your way back. And that's just what we're doing at the moment. So we'll see how the back door goes. We'll spend a wee bit of time to try to get the the, the wing and the, the door to sit nice. This this wing was damaged at the bottom so it might have we've been pushed up. It might be causing things here but it seems to be in a decent enough state to use for to get the line. What we're we buying, see how we put on the set door. Because when you get no doors, you've not got anything to base yourself, so you've got to find a place to work, and that's where you work from the front. So I'm sitting just nice and helpless, defeated. So it looks like we're almost there with the doors now. The car is starting to look fair bit more like a car. Hopefully we've not just knocked it out there. Helpless, defeated, 
this point we had the seat in, the doors on, the car was really starting to come together, although it wasn't long before we hit our first real snag. So the first slight problem that we've came across is these are a little bit too high, you can't really go much lower when we were putting them in so what we're going to have to do is take a notch out the door and a bit more out of the actual side skirts as well. It's not the worst of problems but it would have been nice if we didn't have to do that. So once that job was complete, it was time to install the TRS tow hooks. We decided to put them right onto the crash bar for maximum effect, and while we were at it, we installed some new bumper brackets. My dad has always said that the last 10% in any build matters most for how it looks in the final product, so it was absolutely important that we had these equal to make sure the car looked good in the end. So Alan and my dad have made a cracking job of these. They look quite neat on there. I can get towed out of all the holes now, as soon as I've crashed it. Which hopefully won't be any time soon, but ah, they look quite good on there. With those done, all we'd left to do was install some rear lights, which one we managed to get off eBay and the rest we had to get from Ford. So the car's coming on leaps and bounds now. We can actually see it taking shape, which is amazing. Um, the only problem we've got is, although we've set is this challenge, the main challenge isn't necessarily getting built up in 14 days, it's actually getting the workshop space to be able to do it. After Black Friday, we are usually at our busiest, so it's really difficult to get through all the work, all the files, and then get back onto this. That is the main challenge for us. So, with another day being gone, and we're now on another day, um, that brings us another day closer to target. Ideally, the car could be getting painted, but whether that happens or not, it's a bit of a different story. If we can be ahead of schedule, then we might get some extra stuff done. I have got some other things on order, which, you know, might happen, it might not happen. But we'll see, time will tell. But before any of that could happen, we had to get the front window put back in. So we had Stuart from Clearview Windscreens come out and install the window for us. He started by ripping back the old bond that was on it priming it all up and then reapplying fresh bond before installing the windscreen again. With another job being ticked off the list, it was time to tackle one of the most exciting parts and that is adding the big wing. This part is very important that you make sure it's right, otherwise people will be able to tell from a mile off that it's not straight or that the holes have been drilled wrong. The first part was measuring out and making sure that the holes we drilled in the original spoiler were the correct size for the rubber grommets provided. After a bit of fettling, we got it spot on. This meant we had excellent access to the bolts that hold the wing to the tailgate. Next, we had to mark out the bottom mounting point for the wing on the tailgate. This makes it a lot easier for us to find the centre when we're wanting to drill the holes for the bolts. When it was time to drill, we removed the wing from the rest of the mounting points and drilled the holes. Then came the most difficult part of the entire install, balancing the bolts to get them through the holes and attach the mounting bracket for the blade. And then finally, attaching the blade itself. This was fairly easy with minimal measuring involved. Then again came the last 10% needed, securing the blade to the brackets. This, the best way to do is with Tiger Seal, but getting that bead just nice is incredibly difficult, but the end result was absolutely epic. Helpless, defeated, holding on to something I've needed. With this, we'd made significant progress in the build. However, we were still miles away from the car being ready for a track day. We still had to install the anchor points for the passenger harnesses, the heat shields, the exhaust. We still needed new brakes, as well as track wheels, suspension and tuning. We still had our work cut out for us. And as this video comes to a close, there will only be five days remaining until the track day. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and join us in the next one.